Hello, and welcome to another BZ Power Set Review. I am BZ Power Reporter and not Dragon Food XCCJ, and today we are reviewing a Ninjago set, set 70655, Dragon Pit. This is the largest Ninjago set out of the Hunter series from the summer, and it is also one of the largest Ninjago sets in general, I think ranking number 5 after some of the larger sets like Destiny's Bounty and Ninjago City, but it is definitely a large one. We haven't seen many this large before. Uh, there's a lot going on. You can see this massive gateway with a, a giant dragon skull head here, um, a guard tower firing down at the earth dragon, and a little prison over here, and then there's the gate opening, and then you have all sorts of characters going around. You can see you have four primary villains, the Golden Dragon Master, and then the four original ninjas. The back features an alternate scene showing off uh, more of the uh, characters in action. Uh, there's an advertisement for the uh, Ninjago television show, um, the Hunted series that focuses on the dragon hunters and the ninjas trapped in an alternate dimension. Um, at the bottom, you have a bit of the action features, including the um, prison cell that breaks open, the turret launcher, uh, and of course, the gate that opens on its own. Uh, you can also see that you need to collect the golden dragon armor. That is the uh, collectible of this series, but instead of having to buy multiple sets, uh, you get them all in one character here. This set contains... 1,660 pieces plus a fair amount of extras and is going for $129.99 USD. But still, there's a lot to show off in the set, so let's look into it. For the minifigures, you get a full set of the original ninjas, including Kai, Jay, Zane, and Cole. Um, they're in their new hunted out forms, which are actually the tattered updates of their Sons of Garmadon uniforms. Uh, some of them have extra armor, and some of them have some uh, torn sleeves and all that stuff. So it's actually nice for continuity. And they all have uh, new weapons, um, reminiscent of uh, what the characters got after they kind of revamped them from the Lego Ninjago movie, and that carried over in, into the television universe. It is also a rare set where we get a, a full group of ninjas, because Lego really loves splitting them up into different sets, so it's nice to have them all here. Uh, next we have a four set of villains, including Chew Toy, Arcane, Heavy Metal, and Iron Baron. These are the Dragon Hunters of the uh, new season, and they have uh, some pretty interesting designs, although these three share the same legs, these two share the same torso, and these two share the same shoulder armor, although it's flipped backwards for uh, Iron Baron. Chew Toy has this uh, weird shield here. It doesn't look very effective and looks kind of broken, but he's supposed to be kind of dragon fodder, so it works for him. Arcane is actually the only exclusive dragon hunter figure here. He has this cool dial printing on his torso and a nice reuse of the uh, face shield here. Heavy Metal comes equipped with her uh, chain gun, which she uses to attack the dragons, although this one isn't actually functional. Um, if you look on the back, her shoulder armor allows for her to hold a, uh, a new dagger piece. And then Iron Baron is really the uh, main antagonist. Uh, he comes with the special dragon staff and a claw arm and a top hat and a knife here and then also a peg leg, so he is going full steampunk pirate character right here. So it makes for a fun set of villains. But the truly exclusive character here is the Dragon Master, also known as, spoiler, uh, Sensei Wu. If you've been watching the television series, uh, one of the arcs is that they found him as a baby last season, and now he's growing up at a rapid rate. So he's like a teenager or young adult once he gets this armor. Um, and they definitely went full out for this character. This is the uh, star character of the season. Uh, he comes with a new sword weapon as well as a hilt with a dragon design on it. Um, that's very cool and I definitely want more of them. He also has a shield with uh, some cool dragon printing on it. 
I believe this armor is exclusive to the uh, Dragon Hunter, although these are the collectibles of the series, so this armor appears in a couple of the other uh, Dragon Hunter sets, as well as a little flag with a sticker on it to show off the Dragon Emblem. The next character we have is the Earth Dragon. This is a pretty interesting design. He has a lot of uh, spikes and jagged pieces along his body, uh, legs, and tail, which makes me, uh, which definitely brings out the Earth theme he has going. Um, one of my first complaints is that the legs are a little bit awkward. Uh, the back legs are a little bit too short so it's hard to get him in some decent poses outside of this weird kind of crouching pose so it limits his poseability um design wise the head is definitely the coolest bit um these are printed slopes right here for the eyes and it uses some snot techniques to get the uh, rock-like structure along the nose uh, the jaw does open and I especially like the kind of use of the sword elements here, and they have an interesting connection. But it really fills out the space and gives the dragon a cool look. Um, he does have wings, and they are on hinges here, as well as uh, mini ball joints. Um, they're not my favorite wing design. Uh, I think there's too much free motion, and this looks a bit awkward. Uh, so it would have been cool if they'd used the angled plates like they've used for other dragons. But I guess this is to allow him to fold up his wings better when he's fitting through the gateway. Um, the last bit I like is the uh, giant spiked tail, which reminds me of the Ankylosaurus. And that's a cool bit. All in all, it's not the greatest dragon we've ever seen from Ninjago. But as a, a secondary build for this set that is focused primarily on the... Uh, gates of the dragon pit i think this dragon does uh, does all right and definitely uh, gives off the feeling of an earth elemental creature so here we have the full structure of the dragon pit or more likely uh an edge of the dragon pit you're probably going to need at least two more copies of the set if you want to build a full pit circle around it but that would limit play for most kids so it makes sense to just build this uh, really detailed wall so first you have kind of a prison cell right here, then you have the main gate, and then you have this guard tower right here. So let's focus on the uh, prison cell at first. Uh, this is one of the weaker models here. Uh, it has this little uh, prison area up on the front with a bunch of gates. Uh, to get a minifigure in there, you need to kind of lay that down, and then you can toss them in. Ninjago sets have had a lot of uh, little prisons in the past, so this is an interesting one. On the back, there's a little knob, and when you turn it, the door opens. But also, a trap door opens, and the minifigure can fall down. Except this time, it's not so much a trap as an escape route. And there's kind of a nice uh, tiled interior, so the minifigure can easily pop out and escape. Uh, the main feature is the gate with the uh, cool pagoda on the top. Um, I especially like some of the details, uh, the horns here, the flags. Uh, the roof tiling is kind of reminiscent of the uh, Air Jitsu Temple, and it's also reused on the guard tower over here. Another reused design is the uh, dragon head, which uses the kind of snake head design used in 2012 Ninjago sets. Uh, to kind of get this uh, angled design with lots of teeth. There's space on the inside where you can put Iron Baron. So he's sitting on his throne. Uh, there is a little bit of leeway so the snake head can rise and lower a bit. So you can uh, adjust it when putting in a minifigure. Um, there are some interesting uh, connections here to get uh, some unusual angles on the snake head. And it's definitely one of the more ferocious thrones we've seen in Ninjago. Um, some other interesting bits on the top are a weapon rack with a trusty fire extinguisher. And uh, a little engine right here. Uh, probably a diesel engine of some sort. And as you can see on the side, it runs a uh, gear system. Well, what does that gear system do? It opens the gate. 
So you can see you have uh, some gears on either side that control each gate. There's a bar running through the top here. Uh, so you have a uh, knob on either side that you can turn uh, to control the gate. And then there's also an extra bit here for the engine. So it makes it look like this is what's actually powering it. Uh, one small defect is that the gates don't close at the exact rate. You can see this one closes a little faster. I am very impressed by the gate design here. It is very big, lots of room. Um, and the interior is pretty... Uh, empty with just a plate but it's the perfect size to fit the dragon so the dragon can be waiting just under the gate ready to charge in then you can pull the gate open and boom out he goes so I really enjoy the design here and it looks really cool uh, the gate itself has a lot of fancy greebling on it from the uh, ingenious use of the bar connections on this old gate piece and it's upside down here and lots of bones and white spikes and a couple of uh, torches uh, so that that worked out pretty well uh, speaking of cool designs I like the addition of the uh, snot pieces up here and around here along the gate it hides some of the brick on brick structure that uh, creates the walls around the gate so that design is fairly standard but then uh, these help hide the uh, design and makes it look a little bit more like a, a rugged structure. Uh, moving on, you have the uh, guard tower. Uh, this is an interesting bit because it's a full plate instead of just building a straight wall up. Uh, so you have some cool stickers with some uh, dragon hieroglyphs. Um, moving up a level, you have an observation deck with an interesting looking uh, telescope right here. Uh, it's a little bit difficult to get a figure in there to uh, look at through the telescope uh, because there's a center beam that takes up a lot of space. But you can pull this down to uh, get a better readjustment for the character. And then boom, they're on the lookout. The top features a turret. Uh, it has a kind of fancy design here above the uh, tiled roof. Uh, this does fit on a turntable so it moves around. And it's a flip fire missile, but it's a more interesting design than usual. So uh, these Technic beams hit the flip fires at the same time, and they're attached to a chain. So they shoot off, and they can uh, go a, a fair distance and uh, capture a dragon if you like. Now, the back of the model isn't exactly a lot to write home about. Um, you can see more of the interior of the gate, but it's mostly a lot of open space, although you have a few accessories pinned on the side. You can see more of the gear system and uh, plenty of space for you to put a, some minifigures waiting to get out into the arena or to put the dragon. The prison tower is just a kind of plain wall, so that's kind of boring. Uh, and the guard tower is nothing cool on the top. But at the bottom, you have a little blacksmith shop. So you can see a little fireplace, uh, some tools that are clipped to the edges, and an anvil. Um, we've had a lot of blacksmith shops in Ninjago sets, so this clearly isn't one of the best. But it's a neat little addition that fills out some uh, extra room and gives it some added play value. Uh, as you can see, uh, the, we have the uh, angled connectors here that are connecting the tower to the main gate. On, on top, under the pagoda, you kind of see the back of the throne. Uh, there's some empty space where I guess you could place figs watching the match. Um, but uh, not, a, not a lot to go on here, so the front side is definitely more interesting for this. Overall, it's a, a pretty neat set and very big. It's uh, over 20 inches long and almost, uh, almost 12 inches tall and uh, 8 inches deep or so. Uh, so it's a fairly sizable set and uh, it's kind of good to get that from the price. Uh, there's a lot of action features to play with. My favorite, of course, is the gate. Uh, it's just a really cool design, and having a set this big really means that they can go all out on it. Uh, the fact that it has all the uh, main ninja characters, uh, as well as a, a good handful of villains, means that there's a lot of play value to have for this set. And the uh, included dragon is just the right size for the gate as well. 
So if you're a, a younger kid, there's a lot of fun you can have with this set, and such as the action features and the various characters. Um, for an adult builder, uh, the design is okay, but not a whole lot that's super outstanding. Um, that said, the piece count is nice for a steampunk or diesel punk builder. Uh, you have a lot of dark tan and regular tan, um, li little bits of brown and uh, highlights of white and orange and uh, olive green occasionally. And then there's a fair amount of uh, blacks and grays thrown in too, so a fairly decent selection of parts. Now, of course, the main issue with the set is that it's uh, one of the more expensive Ninjago sets ever. Um, so it's going to cost a pretty penny to get, but I think it does a very good job of encompassing the uh, whole theme they have for the Dragon Hunter season. So if you can afford this set, I think it will be worth your while. Well, thank you for watching another BZ Power set review. Uh, make sure to check out BZ Power for uh, more details in the full uh, picture and text review. And like and subscribe to the BZ Power YouTube channel. And stay tuned for even more LEGO set reviews, such as Ninjago. Thanks again for watching. That's what happens when you try to move the set and it just breaks.